Hello everyone, my name is Cyrus Jansen. I wanna welcome you back to the channel. And if you're new here, we make weekly vlogs about China and its role in society today. Now recently, I had the great pleasure of being a guest on the Honest Drink podcast. And in this podcast, I sit down with Justin, a fellow American to discuss all things related to China. Now our conversation lasted nearly two hours. And instead of taking this two hour video and uploading it directly to YouTube, I've decided to break it down into a series of smaller, more manageable video clips for you to enjoy. Now this is the very first video from our podcast interview. And in today's video, we're gonna be discussing how I started my YouTube channel, why I vlog about China, and Justin and I will also be discussing the Western media biased against the country of China. I think you're gonna really enjoy this episode, so without further ado, let's jump into the studio. Yeah. Uh Welcome, Cyrus. Absolutely, my pleasure. Pleasure to be here. Thanks, Justin, for having me on the uh, the Honest Drink. <laughs> I've been I've been following your videos, and you know I really have to say that I really I really respect what you're doing. It couldn't be a more important time to kind of have this conversation with you yeah. um, and to hear from you. When I first saw you and I see your videos, you know, you, you didn't strike me as the type of person that would really kind of want to dive into the whole content creation game and be a YouTuber. It just, it just you didn't strike me to fit that profile, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I'm just okay. like really curious to, to want to know, like, why, why did you get started in this? Like, what was the motivation? You know, Justin, I have to say, it probably for me, it was just uh, reaching a tipping point. You know, I think, you know, um, for myself, I have lived in China for many years. You know, I, I, immediately when I graduated university, uh, two weeks later, I bought a one-way ticket to Shanghai. And I, I mean, I began my, you know, professional career in China. Um, and so my first job that brought me to China was I was a golf professional. And so that was the very first job that brought me there. And it was interesting because I was, you know, I, had, I really started and my entire professional career was in China. I instantly fell in love with the country, the people. Um, you know, I had learned so much because there was obviously a tremendous amount of stereotypes coming from the United States, even my own conception, you know, my own perceptions of what China was. Um, again, like most people in America know very, very little about the country of China. And, you know, and I had nothing. I had no clue about China. And, and so I think kind of what, what started on my journey was I was open to the idea of going there. I went and, you know, I, I had a really great time for my 10 years in China. I had an opportunity to come to Canada where I'm currently living right now. Um, you know, and what I, what I realized is, is when I came back, I almost had a reverse culture shock because, you know, I had you know, a great experience of being in China and then still, you know, China, you know, in, in these 10 years of me living there, you know, the China's reputation on the Western stage had not improved at all. You know, it had only gotten worse. But yet on the flip side, we see China as a country has actually improved a lot. And so, you know, I saw this difference that was very big. And in addition to that, you know, um, I, I think, you know, as China has been demonized and really been portrayed very negatively in, in the Western media, it just really reached a tipping point to me where I, where I just said, you know what, you know what, I'm going to make a video about China. You know, I am going to put myself out there. I am going to, you know, put a name to it and put my face to it and, and really identify with this, which which does take on risk. You know, I mean, for sure. I, I said this before in one of my videos, you know, 2020 was the year of the, the rise of the China vlogger. And I think that really just comes from many people wanting to hear other voices and to hear a different perspective about China. I grew up in the States. And when I first got here, I didn't know anything about China. I was just as American as apple pie. And so I believed and I was indoctrinated in a lot of the kind of principles and outlook you have on other foreign countries, especially China, growing up there and certain systems of government. So, you know, when I would hear some news, I would tend to believe it. I'm like, okay, yeah. okay, that's what's going on. But when I moved out here slowly, it has started accumulating what I would hear, I would get news and I'd be like, hmm, that doesn't really align at all with my personal experience being here. And, and I would just kind of, okay, I, I, I shrug it off and go on to my life. But over the years, it seems to have escalated and accumulated where I can't really ignore it anymore. I'm like, wait, okay, well, what, what's going on here? Yeah. I mean, there, there's something going on here because the narrative that's being told in the West is not at all what is really happening in reality here on the ground. And if you spent 
any amount of time in China, and especially extended amount of time, you would know that. And so there's this, this intensifying frustration because it's hard to get that point across and to break that hardcore belief system um, that you have when you're growing up in the West. Because how could you, right? Like everything around you, all the media, all the input and information that you're getting is very one-sided and you don't notice that. You just, of course, you believe it. So Ignorance is bliss, as they say. <laughs> yeah, and someone should speak out and stand up and do so. And that's what I, how I see you. That's how I see people like you. Um, I had Matt Gallant on the show from Jayo Nation. Mm -hmm. um, nice. you know, people like Daniel Dumbrell, like you guys, I see you guys as the people who are standing up and speaking out right now. Um, so, I mean, does that portrait, is that accurate for you on your side and in the way you see it? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I really, I really have this, this vision that, that, that one day I can really help be a part of bringing the U S and China closer together. You know, I, I don't know if that's possible. Um, I'm an optimist. I'm, I'm, I definitely believe it is, you know, um, I, that's at least what I'm shooting for. I mean, I really do feel that's the purpose of the YouTube channel. I have some family members that, you know, they, they, when they see my content and they're just like, wow, like, I just don't know really how to comprehend what you're saying, Cyrus, because everything you're saying is completely opposite to what's being portrayed in Western media. So it's just so foreign for me to hear this. You know, I, I don't really know how to process that. And, and for them, it's, I, I get it. I'm like, hey, I, I get it. You know, if I never had the chance to go to China and I stayed in Florida my entire life, there's a, probably a good chance that I wouldn't really have a very positive image of China in my mind. You know, but obviously it's because I have an open mind. I went to China. And like you said to yourself there, you I mean, you saw how things have changed over the years where these Western media reports and these, you know, these insights into China, you know, a lot of them are very inaccurate. And, you know, and again, it's just completely unlike what you've experienced. And again, you, you can just go there on holiday. I mean, during my 10 years in China, I probably had over 20 friends uh, over these 10 years, you know, would come out, visit me. And every single one of them left with a very different experience than what they thought it would be. You know, I mean, re China really blew their mind away. Um, and the only reason, again, they came was because they knew me. And so it was neat because I said, wow, I've been able to help these people, you know, see a little bit more of the world. And even if they came for a two week holiday, they were have, able to have a different perception. Now, of course, people like you and I have been lived in China for over 10 years. You know, we've seen, you know, especially the economic boom and just how, you know, people's lives are improving, you know, very much in China. Um, you know, I mean, even, you know, and it's just kind of battling the stereotypes. I mean, I've had people here in Canada, you know, Chinese people are slaves. You know, Chinese people, you know, they, you know, they're scared to go out on the streets. I'm like, yeah. that's interesting you'd say that. Have you have you been to China? Oh, no, I mean, why would I want to go there? It's like, well, you probably should because. People aren't that. That's that, that's not an accurate portrayal of China at all. And my always what, I, what I'm saying, I always like to say is there's a lot of happiness in China. There's a lot of happiness. There's a lot of you know optimism. And these are the stories and the and the insights that I try to bring into the channel. You know, and and, and what I want to share is because I said no. If you if you think that you know China is a dark and gloomy place and that people aren't happy and that you know they're quote unquote slaves, you know you really need to get on a plane and get out there and go experience it. I mean, even if it's just for a two-week holiday, that's great. I mean, you'll be able to you'll be able to have different perceptions and different experiences, uh, you know, just from a two-week holiday. Yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, I've I've had uh, friends that came out here to visit me for the first time um, from the states, and you know, they were just blown away. They were just blown away. They were like, "Oh, okay, I didn't I didn't think this was China." Oh, you made a really interesting point that really hit the nail on the head for me in terms of how I felt was that. The, the frustration really comes from that in many, in many situations, I feel like the truth is exactly polar opposite to what is being the story and broadcasted out West. Right. right. And so when you try to tell people, you know, how it is here, we end up sounding like the conspiracy theorists, you know what I mean? Correct. Because it's Correct. so, it's so like 180 degrees opposite from what they're told. They're like, how could that be? Like I get, okay, the media spins things, but it can't be completely a fiction, right? Right. And you're like, well, like, well, yeah, it kind of is because of this, this, and this, and this is my experience. And this is the experience of people that I know throughout China and all different cities. And, and we end up sounding like the, the crazy ones. 
And, and right. that's, yeah. and that's yeah. very frustrating. It's funny, but it's very frustrating at the same time. One of the best comments that I ever received in my YouTube channel um, that, that really kind of hits the nail on the head with this one is somebody, somebody commented and said, Cyrus, you know, the, the way that I discovered your channel on YouTube was one day I had an epiphany. I was, I was just, it just hit me. It's like every single, you know, news article or headline that I, every, that I've ever seen in Western media about China has been negative. And I mean, if, again, if I'm just looking at these negative headlines, I mean, China is a terrible place, but on the other hand, I see all these Chinese international students coming, you know, we see Chinese people traveling all over the world. You know, we see them buying investments, houses, we see their economy rising. People are going to China to invest. So again, like it, it, it's, it, it was, it, first of all, it raised a yellow flag to me. I'm like, how can every news headline be negative, but yet we're, the, what we're actually seeing with Chinese people, you know, around the world and their actions and, you know, then how China's, you know, basically the economy just continues to grow and grow every single year is like something didn't add up. And then I went to your channel and I'm like, you know, I probably need to go find another piece of resource to try to get the other half of the story. And then I stumbled upon your YouTube channel and I'm like, oh, there it is. There's the other half of the story. And now, and, and but it was his intuition thinking, basically thinking, there's no way that everything can be negative, right? That was basically his point. He's like, literally everything I've consumed in Western media about China is negative. And that just can't make sense. Like there has to be something positive about China, right? And then, of course, you know, he went to YouTube. And, and I think that's what's been really neat about the, this, you know, this experience of, you know, you mentioned, you know, Matt with, uh, you know, with Jayo Nation and a lot of the other China vloggers. I mean, there's many people now vlogging about China. And it's really interesting because, I, I mean, I, we're all very incredibly grateful that we have these social media platforms that allow us to share our insights and perspective. And I think it's really important as well because, it, it, you know, social media has become so powerful and, you know, even just a, a regular guy like myself, you know, now that has a voice in this, um, you know, in this uh, domain or this, you know, this area to talk about in China, you know, it, it really, I think it helps. And I, and I, and I'm incredibly, I always say I'm very humbled by this because, you know, we do get so much um, outreach and support, you know, from, you know, just fans, you know, just, I mean, the amount of emails that, and, and messages and texts and everything, you know, from people just saying, we really appreciate you being a voice, you know, for China. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Thank you for speaking out for the Chinese, you know, you know, just really incredibly grateful for all the, all the work you do. And that's, that's really motivating, you know, to have people reach out and send you a nice email like that. Now, everybody, I want to take a moment and thank you for spending it with me here on YouTube. And if you are interested in listening to the entire two-hour conversation that Justin and I had, I'm going to put a link down in the description below where you can check out the full interview of the Honest Drink podcast. However, over the next week or so, I will be uploading some new segments. So if you prefer this smaller and more condensed version and really getting the highlights, Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned as we continue to release more exclusive content from this podcast directly here on the YouTube channel. Everybody, make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for future notifications, and I look forward to seeing all of you in a future video here on YouTube. Thank you.